I'm going to get rid of my stick. It's a little afternoon. I apologize. We had a little bit of a hiccup. We're ready for a Festool Live. We are cranking. I got the thumbs up for Big D. We're all masked up in here today. And I'm going to call out the room really quick. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's Friday. Woo! Right before the weekend. And we're ready. Okay. So let's call out the team real quick so we can get going. Over here is Big D on the board. Hey, everybody. Mr. Stick and Move, I'm calling him. <laughs> on the camera, we have Chris the Unit Cyber. Woo! Online, we have Brent for your questions and answers. And right here, we have Min Men. Woo! And don't forget to tell us where you're from. Okay. So, everybody, thank you for your patience on everything. I just want to say. We're done with our show season. <laughs> we just got back uh, for a month on the road, kind of, uh, AWFS and JLC in New England. And I always thank a department here at Festool, but I'm going to shout out another thank you. I want to thank each and every one of you who walked up to the booth and said thanks for Festool Live and thanks for doing what we did last year and continue to do. You made our days. I came back and I gushed to everybody here. Um, Big D was at uh, JLC with us. You talked to him. And I just want to thank you because you guys made our show season fantastic. Whether in Las Vegas or Providence, Rhode Island. I just want to call you all out. We love you. Thank you. We're going to continue with Festool Live. All right. <clears throat> what else am I going to say today? I'll wait to the end because I get some great announcements happening. Uh, today's episode is, uh, I was thinking about it, and I was preparing for it, and I was thinking, man, I've already covered a few of these techniques before, but I think it was episode what, Big D, number 35? Yep, episode 35. And uh, I think we did the domino door. I went through a parallel edge guide and how to use it to create the groove on um, the uh, rail and style stock we use for the domino door. But today I'm going to take it a step further because each and every one of our routers, I'm going to cover a top question. Hey, is there a parallel guide that works for all the routers? Absolutely not. They're all different because of the spacing of the rods for stability. Okay. Now, in scope of deliveries, it can be different because sometimes the rods come with the router but no parallel edge guide. Sometimes you get a parallel edge guide, so always check your little catalog worldwide in your country to see what comes with um, your router. I think your mic just died. My mic just died. Okay. It's okay. Yep, stand by. That's all right. We got to... No. Yeah, easy peasy. Okay. Hey, we got to recycle that battery. There we go. Recycle it later. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. right. We're good. <laughs> we are good. We're on? Yep. Let's see if I'm paying. All the you got. Yep, we're back. Oh, my God. What else can go wrong? Don't ever say that. No, you no, never no, no, know. No. I'm not jinxing us. Okay. <laughs> so. As I go through this, I'm going to step through each and every parallel guide, and I'll show you little nuances between them. I've actually uh, did, a, did a, a little upgrade on one of them that I finally got to do it. So you know what? Enough of me talking. Let's get going. Okay, so what a parallel edge guide does is allows you to run, look, parallel to an edge to create what? Flutes. Okay, some fluting if you want. Uh, grooves if you want. Some mortising. And there's all kinds of applications for a parallel ledge guide. I'm just going to touch on a few today. So let's get started with um, our smallest router, the MFK 700. Then we'll work on to the 1010. Then we'll go to the 1400 and then the OF 2200. So I can show you some wicked cool stuff with it. Okay, so of course, I'm always going to start up my Vaxxis and get going with it. Now, <coughs> what we're going to do with the MFK is... I don't know why I always reach for this router uh, when I'm uh, doing parallel ed, uh, parallel or fluting, just because maybe the base is small and it's a really easy setup with the parallel edge guide. Well, they're all pretty easy. So as I go through this, we're going to create this right here. We're going to do a couple of flutes, okay, and then we'll do a, I can actually... I'll show you how to do this middle flute. It's wicked easy. <clears throat> so what I did is I laid out the board. I'm going to bring it over here like this, put it on the Vaxxus. 
Oh, what I want to do first with the Vaxis is I want to bring it right up like this and get it sucked right to the table in my bracket. Okay, now I'm going to take this apart so you can see the setup of this. Okay, now here's your micro adjust. See that? It's a through hole. Okay, whenever, and you're going to see me do this with all the parallel guides, if they have micro adjust, <clears throat> is I always set the travel about midway. That way there, when I'm adjusting on this line for micro adjust, I don't deadhead hit on either one. It's, it eliminates some frustration for you. Okay, so uh, when you get your uh, parallel guide, okay, <clears throat> the, uh, there's going to be an opening in here. What you're going to do is this one's adjustable. The 1400's adjustable and the 2200's adjustable. We're going to be running it on this edge. So if this was open, like look here with the OF1010, it could tilt a little, okay, and tilt a little like this. So you'll see my, my fix for that in a few minutes. So what I do is I close them all down. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I've already set my depth on this one, but I'll show you how to set depth on the other routers. Okay? You can do your complete setup with your parallel guide without your router in there. So do so. So you're going to take the rods and you're going to deadhead them in here like this. Take it like this. Chris, you getting that? Big D, you focus down on here. Now, the other thing is, see this groove right here? That fits just like that, okay? I'm going to slide this in like this for the knobs. And we did this setup earlier this year, but I want to show you how to flute with this. I'm just going to bring it right on in, let it slide in. And here's the beauty of the Festool system. When somebody says, the router system, when somebody says, what's so special, I always go, duh. <laughs> It's this mark right here on the base, and here, and here, and here. Those are dead center of your router bit. So what makes setup, whether you're using a guide stop, that's the pot or the accessory that runs on the guide rail, or with a parallel edge guide, it makes it wicked easy for setup. See that? That's my center line as I divided my board. So what I can do is I can bring this in here like this, and I'm going to tighten these up. And you can see I'm not exactly on there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten my micro adjust. Now, one of the things I'll coach you on is you just release the tension ever so slightly on these two knobs. Okay, as you bring it in. Oop, I'm going to take that and I didn't have it. Sl it wasn't all deadheaded in. There we go. Okay, just take that off. And you see how it's off a little? If I loosen that, loosen that ever so slightly, tighten that one. I could take that. Watch. See how I can dial that right in on my center line? That is one of the fest tool differences right there. Now, the only thing I got to do is set my motor in and lock it in just like this. I'm ready to go. Now, here comes some of the tips and tricks. When I'm working with this, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about router safety. Whoop, 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 Bluetooth. I'm going to make sure that that switch is off. I'm going to grab dust extraction from here, and now I'm going to put my plug it cord and remember plug it cords everybody full quarter turn now see this when I'm using a parallel edge guide I don't hold it up here because if I got a lot of work to do my wrist is gonna be wicked fatigued so what I always do is I take it like this and you see how I'm holding it okay cord and hose around my arm but I'm gonna bring my bit to the board and back it away now D, as I'm doing this, I'm just going to watch the audio on this because I'm going to be talking while I'm running, okay? You're good. Okay. So as I go into this, my pressure is here. Okay? Now, as I get to the end here, okay, my pressure comes to the back. That's kind of like a jointer, your in feet and out feet table. Now, as I take that, see this one here? I want it equidistant. I only have to make one mark because this is a three flute. And I'm just going to come and take it just like this. Okay? My hand is always pressurized to the board and down here. Okay? Easy Stevie. Okay, next. I'm going to unplug it, and now we're going to set up on center line. <coughs> but you're going to see two marks here. That's my center line on my bit. And when I set this up, 
I always do it like this, everybody. Look, I'm going to take that out, take my, and I got it already done because I have that center line. It makes it so easy. So I'm going to bring it right in. See this? Get it close. Yeah, you can pretty eyeball it pretty good. Mm. Okay. And then I'm going to just loosen those slightly. Make sure that's tight. And I can dial that exactly where I want it. Absolutely perfect. Let me set that up. Let me lock it in. Okay, now, this is not a plunge router. Okay, but because of this parallel guide, I have perfect control on it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And Chris, you're going to have to come in here and take it. Minnie, how's everybody showing up? Pretty good? Okay, so this is what I want to show you. Come in here, Chris, so you can see this. See that little center line right there? I'm going to turn this on and look right here. I'm just going to rock this in like this. See how I can bring it exactly to the center a bit? As long as I know my diameter of the bit, and Chris, come right in here and focus on that. I can come right in and get it like this and tilt it out. And look at that. That's how you do some flutes there. Super, super duper easy. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Next one we're going to do is the OF-1010. How we doing? Good? Came out okay? One of these days I might do this for a living. Okay, now, OF-1010. What's some common things to groove for? Yes, I've used to do grooves with the MFK for cabinetry, but I'm going to do it with the 1010 today. And I'm going to do a little bit of layout. I'm going to get in the way here because I'm a one-trick pony. I'm going to do my layout here for center line. This is the beauty of it because I'm doing an 18 millimeter. So I want an 18 millimeter uh, spanner or back. So I'm going to take that and set it up here. Okay. And I'm going to set my depth a little bit different. I'm going to take that. And now here's what I was talking about earlier. You see this? There's no adjustability in here. Okay, but you have something on the back that I wanted to point out. When I first saw this parallel edge guide, I got this eons ago. I said, what's that screw for or that thread? And all of a sudden, I realized it's for this. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know there's a micro adjust for the parallel edge guide? And when you set it up... You can dial that in like we just dialed in that MFK. It goes on the outside of the rods to set up. It's super duper easy. It takes about a minute to do. But here's the other problem. Not problem, but fix I always do. Uh, I brought mine in from home. Uh, these pop off. You just take a screwdriver and pop them off. And you have three holes back here. So what I do when I'm doing backs or anything, I make a sacrificial fence. You can machine it like I did, or you can just take double stick tape and stick it to these. Okay, but I want to show you how this works, and I want to show you how to set up depth. I'm just going to take it like this. I'm going to feed it in like this. I'm going to bring it over here, and I want to show you the micro adjust. I'm going to tighten up the knobs. Okay, and it's always when you're setting up different parallel guides on different routers, you always got to remember what knobs to tighten, what not. So just take your time, always remember. But on this one, I leave the outside tight. I loosen these two. And then you see this knob right here? I adjusted this earlier, so it's middle of the travel. So I have equidistant travel here. And I can take that. Look how I can dial that in. Chris, you got that? Look at that. You can dial it right into center line. And don't forget to lock those knobs. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down. And I want to go down five millimeters of depth. Okay, so that's pretty easy. I'm going to take, see how I deadheaded it out like this. I took it to the last turret. I dropped it down. And I'm going to go down five millimeters, just like this. I'm going to put a five millimeter domino in there. I'm not going to read the scale. I've showed that before on a few episodes. Just get things easy in your head. Okay. Now, the nice thing about something like this, I use this, the type of material I'm using, I had it from a, a marine job I did in uh, Fort Lauderdale. It's, uh, we call it starboard. 
a lot of uh, fish uh, fish tanks on ships are made out of it. They use it for stair treads and stuff. It's just really it's really slick. We have to we have to knurl it for the boats, but it works great. And once again, I'm going to hold it here. I'm going to make sure that that bit's there. Now, if I wanted to plunge and stop it, I can because this is a plunge router. But I'm just going to run it like this. And you're going to see my pressure's right here. And I don't have that opening. And at the end, I can shuffle it right off like that. So hopefully that made sense to you all. Hey, Minnie, I said you all. Yay. How about that, huh? Man, I might be a southerner sometime, eh? All right. That A was for my Canadian compadres. Okay. How we doing, guys? Good? Yep. So we did the MFK. We did the 1010. Let's go into the 1400 because there's some refinements on the 1400 that I want to show you. So I got this piece of cherry here. I scribed the center line earlier. But I want to show you this micro adjust. First and foremost, okay, I want to show you that one knob right there. It's not a bunch of knobs like we had on the 1010. It's one knob. Okay, we call it the central clamping knob, I think we call it. I call it the Una knob. Okay, never. <laughs> Big D, I said that for you. <laughs> okay, so when I put the rods in, by the way, the rods come with the 1400 here in the States. They're in the bottom of the sustainer. Right, man? Because yeah. everybody says, I didn't get the rods. They're in there. One of my top recommended accessories for the 1400 is the parallel edge guide. You all will always need one. And also the guide stop, which we covered in router uh, episode. Okay, now I'm gonna slide this in like this. And you're gonna notice, I'm gonna get a rough adjustment, okay? And then I'll show you how to dial this one in. But see this knob? I just dial it in. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna check my depth. Here, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna stop and lock it. I think on this one, yeah, let's just go down six millimeter. I'll bring it like that. I'll take that out. Okay, so let's look at this unit. You're going to notice that the rods are locked in here by these two knobs. But you have this big knob and this one. It's got a little slop in it, which is cool. But, Chris, can we get in here? I'm going to loosen this big knob and check out this micro adjust, everybody. It's absolutely perfection. I can dial that right in and and look, I just have to lock that knob. Okay, so on this one, <coughs> I'm going to come on over. I'm going to double check my powers off. Always, always, always make sure of that, folks. Cool. How's everybody been doing? Good? Everybody doing good? Chris, you doing good? You're looking good. Okay. Looking good, Chris. Looking good, Chris. You're supposed to say feeling good. All right. Okay, so we locked it in. We're ready to rock and roll. Now, remember what I told you earlier. You know what? There's little nuances to the Festool system I just dig. Okay, and here's one of them when I was setting up yesterday. See these rods sticking out? Okay, when I my first initial setup was what? The clamps up top, locking it in. But what I did is I took the clamps, look, and came in from underneath, and the profile here, hopefully you guys can see it, is less than the rods. So your clamps, if they're in the way, flip the clamp up from underneath your MFT. It makes it super duper easy. All right, so here we go. You just gotta, and remember which way that router goes. This is a parallel guide. So remember what I taught you in the earlier episodes. Your thumb is your parallel guide or your bearing and your index finger. If you put it to that material when it's handheld, it points in the direction which way you're going. I also use it template guides, parallel guides, and with bearing bits. So I'm going to start it up. Okay. Now look what my hand is. Okay. It's not here. It's here because I need force against there. Not a lot. And I'm just going to do a quick mortise. And you know, the one thing I always forget to talk about when I do something like this is the exceptional dust extraction you get with this. Did you see any dust on the, the flutes? Did you see any dust on that back groove of the 1010? And there's no dust here. Okay, so 
there you go. I want to point out that's the parallel edge guide for the 1400. Woo! Okay, so I'm going to, I have this set up, but I'm going to go through the setup with you folks. Okay? And I'm unplugged right now because the OF2200 is hardwired. Okay? So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is every time I show people, oh, let me get my hand sanitizer out of the way. This is the accessory kit. I think I covered this in the 2200 and the routers. Mm -hmm. Okay, all the different bases and everything. It comes with a parallel edge guide and the rods. Okay, but you, I'm going to show you something else because I covered the plexiglass template in an episode. Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is how to put two of these together. You don't have the height of the plexiglass template, but you have great support to do a mortise in here. So we're going to do this, this mortise right here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the initial setup. So I have in here, I believe it's a 25 millimeter bit. Uh, once again, we have a center line all over. So when you set up your, it has a central clamping knob right here. So I'm going to take this, bring it in here, and get a rough adjustment. Chris, you're going to have to come back here because this is how I set it up. Okay, big D, you'll be in here in a minute, I promise. So I'm going to bring this in and get it close. Okay, but you see how I extended the rods back here? See that? So I'm going to get it close. I'm going to lock it in. And this works the same way, <coughs> excuse me, as the uh, 1400. You can loosen the knob here, and you can just dial in. So what I want to do, Chris, could you come back here and see this? I'm going to pull this parallel edge guide here in tension and I'm going to back it over so I'm on my center line exactly where I want it and this is up tight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this. Okay, now I could use this just like this or like this, but I prefer it because this has a 30 degree offset and you can use it just like this. It actually holds that parallel guide to that without using your hand and going like this because this is a large router. The way these handles are canted and this 30 degree offset makes it absolutely perfect. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it a step further. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to put on another parallel edge guide. That's why I extended those two rods. So now it's a captured cut. And I'm just going to take that in, make sure it's tight, tighten it here, and tighten it here. Okay. <clears throat> so let's do a groove. I mean, a mortise, which is a groove because I'm going long grain. But I'm going to take it back here, and I'm going to set my depth. I'm going to lock in here. Okay. And I'm going to use the scale on this one. I'm going to go down. I'm at the very bottom right here. I'm going to push it down to make sure I'm down there. I'm going to bring it up here, and I get a scale. Yes, this is the state, so I'm going to go 12 millimeter or half inch in depth. Okay. We have a half inch scale on here, and I'm going to lock it in. Woo! Okay. Because I'm down on the ground, I'll release it now. Right here, Chris, can we come in and get this? Check this out. This here is for my dust shroud. We have 360 degree dust extraction. There's only one other thing to do. Check to see if it's off and plug it in. All right. Woo! How's everybody doing? Good? Good. Where you from? Don't forget to tell us where you're from. You got it, men, men. All right. So I'm just going to do a, a quick mortise like this. I'm going to start it up. And what I really want you to notice with this, <coughs> and I'm going to run a decent mortise, okay? And you see how I'm following it? I'm not reaching. I'm walking with it. That's the beauty of the 30 degree. And this is what I want you to notice. Look at the dust extraction. It's phenomenal. We just went an inch wide and a half inch in depth. We, we should be all covered up with dust, and we're not. That's, nope. the, that's the other beauty of the Festool router system. Two things, exceptional dust extraction and scribe center lines all over our routers. Okay. Did I get my point across? I think you did. Manny, did I get my point across? I got it. All right. This is Festool Live, baby. So, wow. Hey, 
Hey, congratulations, Troy Dutt. You're a new grandpa? Awesome. Woohoo. Minnie, you've been writing? I have been. Okay. So, everybody, I want to say thanks. I'm going to say it 100 times before we sign off because i got to call off where everybody's from. I just want to say thanks for hanging in there with us this last month because we, we had a lot of stuff on the road. And I just want to make sure you, you understand we're going to be here going forward. Okay, so i got to call out Owen and Nicole. You're in Italy. It's 6 p.m.-ish. And I just want to say hi. <laughs> okay, thanks for tuning in from Italy. We have Judah and Sela. They're down in Plainfield. Yes, sir. You betcha. Hi, guys. And Minnie, turn that whiteboard around. Oh, my goodness. I was telling Minnie, you know, Minnie, you write down the most places people are from. <laughs> thanks, Min Min. Okay, so let's call everybody out. Woo! Okay, here we go. Homestead, Sweden, and Abba. Ian, how's my buddy from East Yorkshire? I miss you, pal. Tom and Kelly, you guys are awesome from Eatonton. <coughs> we have the Netherlands. We have Frederick Mellon. We have Indianapolis, San Antonio, Texas, Toledo, Ohio, Eden, New York, Southern California, Warren, Batavia, Ohio, Bozeman, Montana, Mike from Woodcraft, D.C. Mike, how you doing? <coughs> Talon and Astoria, Pulley Up, Washington, Dave from Rio Rancho, New Mexico, only U.K., <coughs> Charleston, West Virginia, Wake Forest, North Carolina, Bolton, Connecticut, Hong Kong. That's wicked. Bristol, UK. Raymond, Maine. Sydney, Australia. Italy. Don from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Dan from Swada, Lincote, England. Richer, Richland, Washington. Monroe, Louisiana. Gordon from Edinburgh. How you doing, Gordon? Milton, Washington, Oklahoma City, Indiana. Where's that? <laughs> okay, Wolfsburg, Germany. Woo! The Fatherland. Rumford, England. Whitestone, New York. Zionsville, Indiana. Where's that? South Devon, UK. Ottawa, Ontario. Woo! This is called cool. Hayazu from Suriname, Paramaribo. Woo! Berlin, Germany. Portland, Oregon. Tomahawk, Wisconsin. Wow, Min Min. Raymond, Maine. Lake Oswald, Oregon. Oh, you did it. Okay. Shraza Sazyski Oasis, Poland. So How close. many letters is that? Codwell Hardwoods in Jefferson City, Missouri, right? Yes. Cincinnati, Ohio. Mike from Richland, Washington. Shawsville, Virginia. Randy from Fayetteville, Georgia. York, PA, which is Pennsylvania. Melbourne, Australia. Okay. Malta. Is that my buddy? It's Chris. Chris. How you doing, pal? We're going to do a festival live from Malta. I promise you someday. Barry from Bruges, uh, Belgium. Columbus, Ohio. Austin, Texas. Yes. I'll be in Austin next year. Avon, Indiana. Douglasville, Georgia. Barcelona, Spain. East Yorkshire, England. UK. Rob, it's 5 p.m. in South Devon. Really cool. Los Angeles, California. Olympia, Washington. Oostburg, Washington. Jerry from Jerry. Jerry, I know Jerry. That's Jerry Dubs. Dibs, Dubs. Yeah, for, you know, he works at Toledo, Ohio, Woodcraft. Remember Jerry? He works with Mike. Yes. All right, cool. Is that it, Min Min? Greeley, Ohio. Who else? Anybody else want to <laughs> chime in? I'm in. Niagara Falls. Oh, wait a minute. Canada. Not Buffalo. Yep. Okay, cool. Cool. Oh, that's the pretty side. Oopsie, that was bad. Okay, <laughs> everybody, I say it every single time. We mean it. We love you. Thanks for tuning in. Minnie, you got anything? Wait a minute. Check it out. Spacky, you've been a good boy again. He did. All right. So, everybody. Thanks. We'll see you next week. We got another killer episode planned. You better tune in because you've been asking for this since episode one. So get ready. We're going to rock and roll. I'm already starting to set it up. Uh, did I tell you we love you? We love you. <laughs> we love you. So we'll see you next week on Festool Live. This was episode 65.